Gentlemen, welcome back to the garage. It's another fine Saturday. We're out here once again in the garage working on our SV650. Now, today we're going to tackle one of the very few things remaining that are actually wrong with the bike. There are a number of things that I've worked on so far that were totally optional. The muffler, the gauge thing, um, any number of those things I could have just left and it would have been fine. But I did those because I wanted to and they irritated me. But this issue we really do need to address, and that is this oil leak here at the clutch cover. Now, you'll remember from episode zero of the series that it's leaking oil from down here under the clutch cover, and it, it drips oil down onto the floor. Of late, it seems to have gotten quite a bit worse. There was a while that I was able to ride it, and I could put it away, and it wouldn't drip on the floor. Now, it drips on the floor almost immediately whenever I park it. In fact, I just got back from putting gas in it and also to heat up the oil. And uh, in the time it took me to go inside and take off my helmet and jacket, it had already dripped a drop of oil on the floor. And it would probably drip another if I don't do anything about that. So today we're going to remove this clutch cover and replace the gasket. And while we're at it, we're also going to change the oil, which I have deliberately not done because I knew I was going to do this. So let's get after it. As with any task that involves a drain plug, our first order of business is to open this fill port, make sure we're going to be able to refill whatever we're draining out before we open the drain. With that out of the way, now we can go unbolt the uh, drain bolt. All right, our next order of business is to remove the eight bolts that hold this clutch cover onto this intermediate piece on the side of the engine. I've moved our drain pan over a little bit, just in case there's still some oil in here. This is all exposed to the engine oil, and so when I, when I pull this off, it's almost guaranteed to have some oil that comes dribbling out. So, it's just a matter of going kind of across here and removing the bolts. With all of the bolts loosened, cover comes right off. Now that our cover's off, we can peel this old gasket off of here, which is surprisingly pliable actually. I'm surprised this leaked, but this is our culprit here. And before we put our new gasket on there, we should take a moment to clean the mating surface to help prevent leaks in the future. Take a paper towel here, clean this up. You can see how much oil there was down here. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. It's a considerable amount. It is pretty neat that this here is the clutch assembly. You found that the clutch was slipping, you can take this cover off, you remove these four bolts, and you can take this apart and change the clutch packs. In my case, it's fine and I don't need to do that, but that's what this assembly is. And in fact, if I pull the lever, you can see that moving. There it's released. There I'm holding the lever. You can see, maybe it's in gear. Anyway, when you pull the lever, it pushes this plate here out that way, releasing the clutch. Being first a car guy, I've always thought that that was neat that you, on a motorcycle you could actually take this apart and see it. We also want to clean the mating surface on our cover here. This piece, oddly enough, is plastic. You never see one of these that's plastic on a Kawasaki. No, sir. One thing that's interesting to me is the fact that there, it's it seems like there's, there's water or something coming out of these bolt holes, but none of these holes should go through a coolant passage. I wonder how it got water in it. Anyway, I want to make sure that we clean our gasket surface reasonably well. And now, we're ready for our new gasket. It looks like this. Here's the uh, Suzuki part number there. And we just lay the gasket in the channel. Okay, so the long bolts go here, here, and here. Put our thing on here one more time. I think maybe the way to do this, because these long bolts have this long unthreaded shank, is to put them in first, and then do the short ones. Oh. When you reassemble this, you want to make sure that the bolt that has this little clip thing goes down at this hole here to retain this drain hose. Now we can run them down. 
Note that I'm, I am not going ham on the torque. We've now got all of our bolts in and run down so that they're holding this in place. And now we want to tighten them. So I've done enough wrenching in my lifetime to know what tight enough feels like on an eight millimeter fastener. So I don't feel any particular need to use a torque wrench on these. Guy who can do this by feel is not you, then by all means use a torque wrench. Nobody ever used a torque wrench and regretted it. Well, actually that's not true. I've used a torque wrench before and snapped bolts anyway. But what that was probably telling me is I needed to replace that bolt. And the fact that it snapped was probably a blessing. All of our bolts are in, clutch cover is on. We need to change this oil filter. Before we put our drain plug back in, we need to remove this oil filter and replace it with a fresh one. So let's see if we can just, up, oh, look at that. This is actually the first time I think that I've ever removed a motorcycle oil filter and not had it be ludicrously tight. That there is what we call a blessing. The gods of wrenching have smiled upon us today. May your oil filters actually be hand tight and your bolts snug one up. So there we go. Our new oil filter is one of these fancy K&N ones with the uh, built-in nut. And it comes with this cellophane on it to help keep schmutz out of it. And it looks like it's pre-lubed actually. I've had it happen on other bikes where I've started the engine up after an oil change and discovered that the engine does not do a very good job of priming the oil pump on its own. So to give our bike a better chance of this, we're going to fill this oil filter up with oil before we put it on there so that at least the filter was full. Kawasaki's in particular have been especially bad about that. I'm not so sure about this one. But, better safe than sorry. Also, we'll wipe off a meeting surface here. Top that off. Give it just a minute to drain down in there. It takes a surprising amount of oil to fill this up. Okay, that's probably good enough. So now we put it on our stud there, and twist it on. There we go, oil filter on. One thing you don't want to forget to do, replace these little gaskets when you remove these so that you don't have a leak at your drain plug. There we go. All right, so we're gonna use one of these copper washers, which this being an aluminum mating surface ought to work just fine. And then we take our drain plug and we put it back in there. There. We use our breaker bar and get it snug one ug. With our drain plug in and our new oil filter on there and our gasket replaced, we're ready to fill this up, check for leaks. So the oil I'm using is a 15W50, which seems awfully thick to me, but that's what the manual calls for, so that's what we're gonna use. So there's our sight glass there. We just wanna fill it up until we're even with the full line on our sight glass. It's okay if it's a little below the uh, the full line, because I have the bike tilted forward just a hair while with it on the stand like this. And then according to the side of the case, it should take about two and a half quarts, I think? 2300 milliliter. Okay, so we need just a little bit more. You can see on the sight glass there, we need about a half, a half more. So, okay, just a hair more. And I think we're gonna call that good. Go ahead and put our little fill cap back in. I mentioned before that I've experienced a problem on some motorcycles where the oil pump doesn't reprime after you change the oil without doing a little song and dance where you gotta like loosen the oil filter and get the oil to pump through it before you tighten the oil filter back down. It makes a mess and it's a pain in the neck. But it's important to check this just in case. I have no reason to believe that this motorcycle requires it, but I'm gonna check anyway. We've got our oil pressure light here that if we turn the ignition on, it comes on while the engine is not running. So I'm gonna start the engine up now, and we're gonna make sure that this goes out. And if it doesn't, then we need to do the song and dance with the oil filter. Fire in the hole. There we 
there it is. Oil light went out. Our engine is running and not knocking. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. You should probably road test the bike before you get too far from home once you do a procedure like this, especially taking the clutch cover off, just to make sure that you were in fact successful in fixing your leak. Uh, but it's beer o'clock and I don't feel like riding it anymore today. So I'm not gonna do that, but I will do it next time I ride it. But in your case, if you're gonna go out and ride it immediately, you should ride it around the block first and make, make sure you're not like gushing oil out of here before you take it out on the highway. Especially at a location like this where you could get oil in the rear tire. And that would obviously be unfortunate. We don't have any oil leaking out of here now, and the oil level is up above this gasket. So I think we were probably successful. But to be honest, you re really would need to uh, take the bike through a couple of drive cycles where you get it up to temperature and let it cool down. You get it up to temperature and you let it cool down in order to be sure that you've fixed this. So I'm going to have to do that in the future. But because it's not leaking here, I'm calling this yet another one of my many victories. And if you came here looking for mechanical advice, I hope this helped you out. If you came here looking to be entertained, I hope you were entertained, and I will see you in the next one.